I think the beauty of multiculturalism and interculturalism generally is about the beauty of diversity and the power of diversity. And uh, if we focus on this beauty and, and this diversity as a strength, as an asset, and as a possibility rather than a threat, this is one of the key mindset shifts or mindset strengthenings that that would be very helpful in continuing this path towards making pluralism more and more feasible and viable. And as a multicultural person myself, I can tell you my journey. Um, I was born a foreigner in a household that is multicultural, all within a Western European North American perspective. But even throughout my life, and even as a child, the mixture included cultures and people from all over the world, but not only people from different parts of the world, but people who belong to and are connected to different parts of the world and then a mixed. And this mixture for me has been one of the most beautiful and richest aspects of who I am. And it's nurtured everything about me, really. I think it's given me wonderful advantages and beautiful perspectives that help me be able to see things in different ways, to connect to different people, no matter where they're from, no matter what type of backgrounds they have, whether they're similar to my own or not. Um, and it's made the world a place that I can explore and feel at home in, regardless of whether I was born there, or I have a passport from there, or I lived there before or not. And when I go to a place that's multicultural in itself, because the, the different parts of the world have come there and are part of it, I feel this energy, this bubbling ebullience of life and diversity and, and dynamism uh, that are involved in it. And I think that um, is something that you can't ignore and you can't uh, underestimate. I think a lot of times maybe the fear of pluralism and multiculturalism comes from a perspective or a mindset of us and them, of othering. And it comes from a um, lack of knowledge or lack of contact or from bad experiences that might have included threat in one form or another. The thing is that what we maybe forget is that the threats that come in those kind of perspectives very often come from systems and infrastructures that are not built to facilitate that contact, integration, and um, shared un development of shared understanding and intolerance and connection among those different um, perspectives and cultures. And so, for example, if you look at the refugee crisis, a lot of the anger that came um, was around, oh, our, you know, they're going to steal our jobs and they're going to threaten our healthcare systems and our social care system is not built for that. Um, and uh, People are waiting for housing, blah, blah, blah. And if you look at, oh, these are people, how interesting are they? What would it be like uh, for them to come and sit down and have dinner with me and have coffee and have a conversation? Then we can separate the people from the systems that are built for particular arrangements of society. And those two are separate things. So I think I'm rambling all, all over the place, but I think if we focus on cultivating ways to make diversity exciting for people to explore without feeling threatened, that's a very good way to start. And children are probably the ones that can give us the most examples and lead the way in doing that. If put the children together, that's the first thing that they're going to do. Great. This is really eye-opening. And starting with children, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Put them together, they're going to play. Find out what they, who they are. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Good. Thank you very much, Zenobi. Yeah.